check out my new tools to stay in the theme of this channel I bought them from Harbor Freight because I'm on a budget plus I'll probably lose them anyway welcome back to another episode of Honda budget builders wait a minute budget Honda builders today we'll be uh, working on my wife's CRV uh, the CRV is smoking really bad um, I replaced the head gasket about two years ago along with the timing belt and water pump but it, it's smoking really bad it makes me think it's either the valve isn't sealing correctly or there's um, the valve stem seals are bad it could also be the piston rings that are bad because I mean the car does have 260 something thousand miles but I have checked the oil. It's clean. It's not milky, milkshake looking. And the uh, the antifreeze, the radiator is full and it's clean. So it's, I'm pretty sure it's not the head gasket. But it, it, could, it could be. So we're going to do a compression test. Um, we're just going to do a dry compression test. Which really is worthless. It only gives me half of the story. I need to do a wet compression test as well, but I'm kind of running out of time and I need to get things done today. I'm going to work on her AC unit as well. So, But I'm going to do uh, three tests on each cylinder and we'll go from there. About two months ago I replaced the spark plugs, so they should be good. I also replaced the wires. So uh, let's get started pulling these spark plug wires out and then we'll get the plugs out. And they, they're actually pretty clean. There's no oil. Everything's good on them. So that's always a plus. Let's uh, fast forward here. And if you don't have one already, I would highly recommend buying one of these uh, um, socket wrenches that has the flexible handle it, it's so nice it makes things so much easier so like I said about two months ago I replaced the spark plugs and they're still in really good shape so there's uh, no no issue with that um, and if you're wondering why I'm doing a voiceover my microphone was not plugged in and so there was no audio but uh, alright, so we're going to pull the spark plugs out and we'll get started on the compression test. And like I said, I'm going to do three tests per cylinder. That way I get, you know, a good average. Plus I'm using uh, the cheap Harbor Freight compression tester. So re the results may not always be accurate. Before you actually get started with this, what you want to do is you want to pull the... Um, clips on the spark plug or not spark plugs on the uh, fuel injectors because you don't want fuel to be spraying into the cylinder as you're testing the compression there's other ways you can do this you can pull the uh, fuse for the ECU or pull the um, main relay whatever this way is easy that's right here so a compression tester is it's really quite simple it's just this hose that you screw down into the uh, into the spark plug tube um, it comes with a gauge that you can snap on top of it and um, the kit I have from Harbor Freight it was like I don't know, I think it was like twenty nine ninety nine or it, it might have been thirty nine ninety nine but it comes with several different pieces um, for different size spark plugs but uh, it, it's pretty simple process you just stick it screw it into the spark plug um, put the gauge on there make sure that there's no pressure that has like a little release valve on it and then you crank the car over and once you do that then the uh, piston will move up and down the valves will open and close and it'll create the uh, the compression and then this will uh, gauge or tell you how high the compression is and as you can see here the uh, the first touch is showing like 130 psi so that, that's not that's not very good 
Now to reset it, you just press this little button here and it resets the gauge. Another thing I forgot to mention is when you start the car or crank it over, do it for a minimum of 10 seconds. Well, at least that's what I do. Um, they say a minimum of 6 seconds. So on the second test, you can see where it pops up to almost 150, but then it settles at like 140. So this is why I like to do 3 and then take the average of the 3. Now we uh, reset and do it our third and final time on the first cylinder. The first one was 130 and then it was 140 and this one you can see it kind of gets up to 150 but again it stops at 140. Alright so I'm not going to sit here and bore you with every single uh, cylinder and the readings of every single one of them but uh, here is a graph or I guess I should say an Excel spreadsheet. So what you're seeing here is uh, cylinder one through four, the first test, second test, third test. As you can see, the numbers aren't great. I, I don't know exactly what the numbers are supposed to be. From what I've seen or what I've read, like 135 to uh, 220, 140 to 200, 135 to 85 are supposedly good numbers to be within but I don't know exactly I can't find the exact specifications for the B20 B4 I know like the higher compression engines you know it, it might be 220 the lower compression B20 you know it might be around this range I, I'm not sure and I can't find the definite answer but anyway what I did was I added the three up got the total divided that by three and that's my average so this is my average for all cylinders and now from what I've read it, it doesn't matter as long as it's not like below 120 and as long as they're not within or as long as they are within 10 percent so what you do is you take your high number which is 149 and your low number 136 you subtract those you get 13 and then you take 13 and divide that by your high number and is that what you do yeah divide it by your high number and then you divide that number by 100 and this is what you get so it's within 8.72 percent which it's kind of on the high end I still feel like there's an issue. I don't know if it's the piston rings or if the valves are just not seat seating correctly. Um, the valve stems are, they're not the valve stem, the valve stem seals are not sealing all that well. So I, I, what I really need to do is a, um, a wet test. And what that consists of is you add like a, teaspoon or two of um, oil into the cylinder and then you repeat the test and if your numbers are the same then you have a problem with your valves if the numbers are higher then you have a problem with your piston rings at least that's how I understand it so anyway um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.